It's over 50 years ago when I first met both John Gray and Ed Cooley. Take John first because I met him slightly before I met Ed. It's 1962. I'm running for the legislature. I'm a relatively unknown person. I'm trying to raise money. My father-in-law had been the founder of the Boy Scouts in Oregon. John was a contributor. So my father-in-law suggested I see John. I went to see him. He listened to my pitch. He gave me $250. Now you're going to say $250? He wasn't that kind of a cheapskate. You have to understand that my campaign in 1962 only cost $1,300. After that, I was in the legislature, and John was in the midst of developing Salishan, Sun River, and I was on the state and local government committee and had contacts with all of those cities and the planning commissions. And of course, so many of these projects are schlocky, not John's, they were tasteful. But he wanted to ensure a local planning commission or a city council that his projects would be different, and they surely are, the taste of them, the development of them. Sun River, most of you have been there and skied. Salishan, I've stayed at the lodge. John's Landing, of course, was a later, slightly later development, and did, the, the name didn't used to be John's Landing. But you talk about a tasteful, both multi-house and single-house development, all fitting of John Gray. That was the kind of decision he would make about environment. Now Ed Cooley. I met him under totally different circumstances. But by this time I'm in the U.S. Senate. Ed is testifying before a business development committee that Tom McCall had set up. And Ed was there testifying on behalf of the Port of Portland in the airport in support of the SST, the supersonic transport, the Concorde as it was called. Every airline thought they have to compete. This plane would cross the Atlantic half the time of any of the American flights. And Ed was there supporting it. I don't think he, I don't think any of us understood what a disaster it was for the environment. Fortunately, it didn't last. They only made 20 planes. Nobody could afford to pay four times the cost to fly across the Atlantic and and only a hundred seats in the plane just couldn't make money on it. Ed, however, at that meeting, invited me to come over to Precision Cast Parts. And of course, I'm a politician. I was happy to go over. He closed down the operation for about a half an hour and let me talk to the employees for 10 to 15 minutes and answer questions. But before I left, he said, let me show you some of the things we're doing here in the neighborhood on our property. And he began to take me around and show me this, see this little rivulet of stream here, here's what we're planning to do with it. And over the years, each time I'd come, he would show me something different. I had no idea. There was there that much little creeks and little rivers and little spots of water on South, in Southeast Portland. Maybe I was raised in the Northeast area, maybe we didn't have them. But Ed was very conscious of making sure that precision cast parts fit in the neighborhood he wanted it to fit in. And he wanted it to fit in a tasteful neighborhood where the environmental concerns were met and taken care of. So that portion of Portland had a great lucky streak when precision cast parts was located and Ed was president. No area could have asked for more. <laughs> 